The UK's new leader, Rishi Sunak, has faced the House of Commons for his first Prime Minister's questions. Opposition leader Keir Starmer took the opportunity to accuse Mr. Sunak of putting party first and country second. That's after Suella Braverman was reappointed Home Secretary just six, six days after resigning over a security breach. In response, Mr. Sunak said Ms. Braverman had made an error of judgment and he was delighted to have her back. Prime Minister. Yeah. Was his Home Secretary right to resign last week for a breach of security? Yeah. Prime Minister. Well, Mr. Speaker, can I thank the uh, Ronald Wood gentleman for, for his kind and indeed generous uh, welcome to the dispatch box. I look forward to Prime Minister's question time with him, and I know that we will have no doubt robust exchanges, but I hope that they can also be serious and grown up. So I look forward to it. Well, uh, he, it, look, he, he asked uh, about the Home Secretary. The Home Secretary made an error of judgment, but she recognised that. She raised the matter and she accepted her mistake. And that's why, that's why I was delighted to welcome come back into a united cabinet that brings experience and stability to the heart of government. We can all see what's happened here. He's so weak, he's done a grubby deal exactly. trading national security because he was scared to lose another leadership election. There's a new Tory at the top, but as always with them, party first, country second. All right, Arise Chief Correspondent John Cookson joins us now from London for more. Hello, John, and uh, getting straight into it, into it, we all watched the Prime Minister's questions, uh, Rishi Sunak's very first. Now, what were some of your key takeaways? Well, first of all, I think he did a very decent job to go into that bear pit to, uh, and take your first Prime Minister's questions. I, 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 personally, I, I, I thought he coped with it uh, very well. He's an experienced parliamentarian, of course, having been uh, an MP for seven years and uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer, Finance Minister uh, for, for, for a couple of years. Uh, so, uh, But even so, it, it was not an easy job. and. I, he must have been, I'm frankly, a, a little nervous, but didn't show it. Compared with, say, Liz Truss uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago when, when she did her first uh, PMQs, uh, she was like a, a rabbit trapped in the car's, the car's headlights. But that was nothing uh, uh, compared to uh, Rishi Sunak today. So I, th I think he did a, a, a decent job. The other thing I would say right at the top of here was that I've been following these parliamentary uh, debates for a number of years, you might say, as an experienced uh, journalist. And uh, the thing that really st st stuck out to me right at the start was that we had a British Indian Prime Minister, Kemi Badenoch, another minister sitting next to him, uh, of Nigerian descent. Uh, we had the James Cleverly uh, of African descent uh, uh, as, as the Foreign Secretary, and Suella Braverman as, as Home Secretary. I mean, that's, that's quite a moment in British political history uh, to have that diversity in what has, has been until now an uh, establishment uh, basically, you know, basically white in, in, in majority. So, uh, uh, and it was widely praised by uh, other MPs during uh, the debate, and, uh, and, and rightly so. So that, that was my first takeaway from uh, today's PMQs. Indeed. Keir Starmer. No, go Keir, on. Keir. Go on. I'm yeah, sorry. Keir. I thought you were done. Please go on. <laughs> <laughs> Never done. <laughs> Keir, Keir Starmer took uh, various attack lines. We've heard him on uh, Suella Braverman, and perhaps we can talk more about that in a moment. Her reappointment was controversial. I mean, she was sacked for two data breaches only six, seven days ago now, uh, and yet she's back at the Home Office. We can talk about that. Uh, Keir Starmer also took a swipe at uh, so-called non-DOM status. Now, just the background to this is that uh, Rishi Sunak's wife is, is, is a foreign national, and foreign nationals in the UK can avoid tax on their foreign earnings, in her case it's huge, it's millions, if not billions of dollars, uh, if they, de they, de they declare it and, and register themselves as non-DOMs, non-domestic uh, uh, citizens. Uh, and so, um, I'm sorry to be a little bit complex on this, but basically Keir Starmer didn't mention uh, Keir, uh, Rishi Sunak's wife specifically, but he 
asked uh, Sunak if he was going to abolish this non-DOM status. Uh, he skirted around the, the subject saying that the difficult decisions had to be made. But I thought that was a significant moment that Keir Starmer was, was getting quite, quite personal there. Um, he also alleged that um, Rishi Sunak uh, wasn't on the side of working people. Then Sunak came back and said, uh, well, you know, I, I steered uh, uh, the country through uh, the COVID crisis with a very uh, forthright furlough scheme. Uh, so uh, 30 minutes of Punch and Judy shouting and uh, cheering for one, booing for the other. Uh, Parliament seems to be back to normal. Indeed. Now, John, of course, you, you rightly noticed that uh, Rishi Sunak was probably in full defense mode when it came to Suella Braverman's reappointment. With all the controversy that surrounded that, do you think that this is going to be worth it in the end? Look, Labour are going to use this as an attack line for, 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 for weeks and months, and, and I think it might be argued that her reappointment was possibly a mistake uh, she what, what she did was to send uh, uh, top secret documents uh, using an ordinary me email system rather than the protected one, and that was that was, that was a, an obvious data breach. I don't think it was uh, uh, intended, but it happened. Uh, Sunak has said, "Look, she's apologised. She realised it was a mistake, but." There will now be a further investigation, and indeed in the last few minutes, Yvette Cooper, who's a prominent Labour politician, has called for a full inquiry by Parliament uh, into this. And you can be sure uh, that journalists will be working on this uh, investigation to find out exactly what happened, because we still don't know what documents she sent and uh, who they went to. Uh, so it will be an attack line for Labour. And it may well be that uh, th this was a, 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 the first mistake of uh, Rishi Sunak to reappoint her as uh, Home Secretary or Interior Minister. Now, uh, prior to the PMQs, we did receive a confirmation that Jeremy Hunt would be moving the financial statement from uh, Halloween to uh, November, I believe. Uh, what, what's the insight about that decision? What's causing this delay? Well, Halloween was never a good idea, was it? Because uh, you can see the headline writers now, uh, Halloween horror tax increases, and because we know tax increases are on the way. And originally it was slated for uh, November the 27th, so to bring it forward to November the 17th, as they're now proposing, seems to make sense, especially as the markets have settled down, the pound strong, uh, and, and the FTSE index uh, is doing reasonably well. So we, we, it, we're, we're back to square one pre the, the trust era. So it makes sense if ca more care is needed with this vitally important uh, uh, budget statement, then, then extra weeks should be factored in. And uh, uh, it gives a chance for the Office for uh, Budget Responsibility, which is an independent body which Looks, it looks into what's being proposed and, and makes recommendations to the government. It, 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 it does seem the right decision to delay it until uh, November the 17th to give them some extra weeks of, of, of timing because we know it's going to con contain uh, uh, proposals for uh, tax increases for the British people and uh, uh, cuts in, in public spending and, and a general tightening of belts. Uh, so it's, it, politically for Sunak, it, 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 it could be a bombshell. Indeed. Now, John, um, of course, we know the Labour leader reiterated his call for a general election and Sunak responded. Well, what do you think is going to happen with the general election after what we saw play out today? Well, Sunak's ruled it out and, and it's not within the gift of, uh, of, the, of the opposition to call a general election. It's down to the... Um it's down to the Prime Minister to call a general election, and Sunak is a Prime Minister with an 80-seat majority in the House of Commons, and that, 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 that's the truth of it. Um, the UK, it, it doesn't have a presidential system, it's, it's, a, it's a monarchy with an unwritten, thousand-year unwritten constitution. And Sunak argues, uh, uh, Labour of course disputes this, that the, 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 he's acting on the manifesto which Boris Johnson won on back in 2019. In other words, it doesn't attach to the person, so you can change Prime Ministers as many times as you want. People voted for the manifesto, and that's the Conservatives' argument. Now, Labour won't let this rest. They will continue to call for 
a, a general election because politically it's good for them. Also, the Scottish Nationalists, which the, they did today, Ian Blackford in the House of Commons again uh, called for um, a general election. But secretly, I suspect that the opposition parties don't want a general election right now, and certainly one before Christmas. You know, it's going to be costly. It will, send the markets into turmoil again, possibly, which is the last thing that the UK needs. And I think the opposition parties would well prefer for the Tories to sort out the mess that's uh, been created uh, following the, the Trust administration before they even really, really want a general election. So there'll be lots of calls for a general election. How genuine those calls are, I'm not so sure. John Cookson, Arise Chief Correspondent, thank you so much for navigating us through this very unpredictable period of British history.